Welcome back to another video. My name is Henrik and today we're going to be looking at the Kia Sportage in its facelift version from 2021. The other way you can say this is basically the Kia Sport H. That's what I heard in a video a couple of hours ago. So I don't know what that guy is on. Maybe that's actually how you pronounce it. But a lot of change in this car and in general, we're gonna look at it and its competitors, see if this car is worth buying and if you maybe should get it. We also have it in the GT line with the mild hybrid system. So one of the cheapest variants you can get apart from the GT line, that's the most expensive. Um, version that you can get but we do have the mild hybrid system in here so the lowest one because we do have the lowest variant well not exactly the lowest we just have the mild hybrid system which is the cheapest but we do have the second highest or the highest when it comes to the engine because the engine is going to be a 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine producing 180 horsepower with 265 newton meters okay um, and otherwise you can also get a 150 um, horsepower variant you are going to have a couple of different variants for the engine. You're going to have a mild hybrid system, a full hybrid system, and a plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid obviously being the most expensive, up to 265 horsepower, so quite a lot. Max of this, we were able to get a tachometer speed of 202 kilometers an hour with a VMAX of what I just mentioned and 0 to 100 at around 9 seconds for this exact model, which is also quite good enough. It's a family SUV, you don't need a fast car, you just need an efficient car. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but other than that, let's also check out the design. So the design wise, we got a very sporty looking front because we do have the GT line. First of all, let's talk about the price. The car is going to start at around 35,000 euros, so just under that. The GT line is going to set you back with the mild hybrid system starting at 47,000 euros. And how it is right here, you can configure three extra stuff on top of the experience green color, which is 950 euros euros with the black on the top that's going to cost you around 51,110 euros so quite a lot for what you get but you do get quite a lot of things we'll check that out a little bit more we do have matrix lights on here which are well full matrix lights this is your daytime running light which is basically a boomerang so it looks pretty cool up here you have your blinker and then your other combined lights of your high beams and stuff like that Good looking design in the front in my opinion it is controversial because it is a fairly um well they took a good step forward to see what we can do in the new design language. And um, we have a big grill in the min middle here. If you look from the top down, you also have the honeycomb design is in silver in the middle. You have the Kia logo on here and with the big grill, the lights get pushed out quite far and they're basically connected. So it's an interesting design, really depends on what you personally like. And a little bit of a lip down here with also some other fog lights in there. For the design choices, you also have the lowest one, which is the Vision. You have the Spirit, you have the Night Edition line, that's like a special one right now. And you also have the GT line, so the top variant. The back design is a little bit of the Kia EV6 language. Up top, you can definitely see the light bar. It doesn't go completely through, but it does have that like arching way, which does look a lot like the um, Kia EV6 and especially if you look from right here you have that like little bit of a bump out otherwise it's a fairly flat back with a very big um, design on the bottom here which I'm not the biggest fan of but they did add some black design in there just to not have this like extend all the way down to make it all look as interesting a little bit of a fake diffuser down there um, which is like in a chrome touch and in general in my opinion an okay looking back nothing special but for a family SUV what do you expect you're not gonna be looking at something great with a big spoil on top which is Oh, moves quite a lot. Let's talk about the dimensions. We have a car that is four meters and 66 long. We have a six, one meter and 66 tall, one meter and seven, uh, one meter and 68 wide. So fairly good proportion for that. So good for the city as well. You have electrical foldable side mirrors. You also have 17 up to 19 inch wheels. We have winter tires on here, but because we do have the GT line, these are also going to be 19 inch, which, are, which have a fairly nice design. You have a good looking design on the side here with a little bit of black touches. One thing that I would critique is this up top. In the Kia EV6, for instance, they had like, like this nice flowing design all the way through the whole car. But this just throws me off a little bit because it is not connected and just interrupts the design language in there. You have this nice little chrome all going all the way through. If these would have just connected, it would have looked a little bit nice in my opinion. Keyless go in the front, so you have to press the button on here to lock it and then unlock it if you're with the key and your privacy glass in the back. So one feature we're gonna have to talk about while we're walking to the trunk is the intelligent boot function, which I would definitely recommend to turn off because it does this. It's gonna start peeping. That was perfect timing, by the way. It starts peeping as soon as you're in the radius behind it or you're just walking through it, it's gonna start peeping. It is gonna open automatically, which is a nice function. Um, but definitely turn it off because there is a lot of times where this is just annoying. You're going, you're basically, let me do this again. Let's close it real quick. And those, that is just insanely loud, by the way. 
if you're trying to go to the car, your house is right there, you have to walk around the car in the back. You're like, oopsie daisies, here's my car, let me walk by it. Oh, yeah, and then, oh, okay. <laughs> let me try that again, let me lock the car. There, so now it's locked, so I'm like, oh yeah, let me walk to my beautiful Kia Sportage. I'm walking behind it, it's like, oh, everyone's here. Oh yeah, neighbors, there's my car, that's my Kia Sportage, just gonna be very loud. And it does that beeping sound every time. Look, I'm just walking behind it. Do, 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 and it's gonna peep. Not the biggest fan of that, definitely turn it off. We did, um, we tried to clean the car like this box and then we sprayed it. And as soon as we were right here, it does this and it opens and like, oh wow, okay. And we almost sprayed the whole thing in there. So let's look at the, um, okay, that was, that was a fail. No. Let's look at the boot because we have 572 or 562 liters up to 1751. So a very big boot, you must say, with a little bit of storage space down here for your safety bag and some other stuff so you can actually store a little bit of in there. If you get the plug-in hybrid, you can have a little bit less storage space and you also get a 12 volt on the side. You get a little bit of foldable stuff up here so you can cover it up. You can fold over the seats via this, um, like the lock on here and you can also fold over the middle seat. We're gonna look at that once we're driving a little bit more. So let's start to drive and first of all, Kia sounds, let's take, uh, oops, let's listen to the sounds by going in here and we're gonna turn on the engine. Beep, 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 beep. It's like a little bit of a sound, but still. Nice little display here for your infotainment and also your digital cockpit. We can turn that down and we also have, oh, look at that, we have cool seats. You want some cool seats? Yeah. You get some cool seats. We also got heated seats, which is really nice. No, no. So, <laughs> um, so very standard wise, very, uh, well, quite a lot of things. Heated seats, cool seats, heated steering wheel. Also in the back, well, not that back, but both the seats on the outside are gonna have heated seats, which is also a very nice function. You are known, um, or Kia is known for, they are very thorough package with their standard equipment. For instance, in the Kia Pro CGT, we also had heated seats in the back. Actually, I don't think we had, in the Kia V6, do we have heated seats in the back? I don't remember. Okay, there's a car coming. We're just gonna quickly take another look. So this in here is also very similar to, for instance, the Kia V6, so you can press on there and you can switch between the stuff. This is for your climate control. I like that you have buttons in here, so it's actually gonna change what you're looking at or what you're using. So there's climate control and then navigation, obviously your power, and you can also press on it, you can turn on the power or turn it off for your volume. Left or right? Left. Okay, well. Oh, this is a really shit exit. Whew. And then you can see, that's one thing that we're get, definitely gonna have to talk about. This gearbox is interesting, or this whole drivetrain, because this is the 1.6 liter four cylinder and it just kicks off straight away with so much power. I was basically on there a little bit, a little bit more aggressive, but not too aggressive. And it, I don't know what it went up to, but probably like two and a half um, RPMs, or 2,500 RPMs. So quite a lot. and. It, Especially if you're, for instance, trying to s start somewhere going up a hill or something, and you're going a little bit on the gas, it is going to kick you off straight away. And if you're just trying to creep forward a little bit, it's more like a boom, which is not that nice. Especially if you're, for instance, my work, if I go drive out of my work, so the, um, the underground parking garage, there's a crosswalk basically in front of it. And if there's bike people, like, bike people, well, if there's people on a bike, um, so if there's bicycles driving past, I'm just trying to creep forward a little bit and it's basically, I'm, I'm just gonna drive them over. That's how it feels like. And it's very, very hectic in my opinion. It's not the best drive train that we've driven. So the mild hybrid system, if you're looking at that, maybe choose something else. I know the plug-in hybrid is gonna cost you a lot more or maybe just get the full hybrid system, which might be a little bit better. We haven't driven it, so I can't speak for that, but the mild hybrid system is just not the greatest. And also what I've read from other reports, he's okay. Um, the mild hybrid system is not supposed to be the greatest. He might even be here now. Um, Otherwise, quality-wise, really, really well done in the interior. Quality-wise, everywhere, you got good plastic, not good plastic, good material up there. You have some other leatherette type stuff down here. Memory function as well, in general. Also, the steering wheel is nice up here, good quality. Center console, I know there's a lot of piano black. 
every manufacturer basically does that nowadays cost saving and stuff like that but still it's gonna get scratches after a little bit so you're gonna have to obviously take that into consideration otherwise great quality seats in here also very nice comfortable um, they also have this like Alcantara inlet or well, not Alcantara inlet I don't know what this is actually on the side a little of a suede fabric and with the heated and cooled seats, you're gonna have those little bit of holes in there as well, which make it very, very comfortable. When we're driving here in the city, let's talk about the consumption. We have it on eco mode, and we've been driving this kind of eco mode the whole time. And this is where I am, well, where I was talking about when it comes to the consumption, because the consumption here is, well, it's not what I would have expected for this car. The car only weighs 1.5 tons, which is not a lot, and it does have that mild hybrid system, so you might expect a little bit of a less consumption. But this thing has been eating 10.1 liters. In the city, we've been averaging around 9.1, 9.2 liters, even 9.6 at some points. I know it is a petrol engine, it's not the diesel engine, so the diesel engine is gonna get a little bit less consumption, especially if you're going over um, longer distances. But 10.1 liters is a lot. Uh, the claimed is around 8 to 8.5 liters. If you're looking at a Hyundai Tucson, straight, right? Let's go, right? If we look at a Hyundai Tucson, for instance, or Tucson, that car is claimed with 7.1 liters, or a liter less, and it basically has the same drivetrain. It has the, it's on the same platform, if I'm totally mistaken. I don't know why this has such a high consumption, which is very, very, well, it, it's very, very high. That's what I'm just gonna say, um, which is surprising for this car. Otherwise, surrounding view is fairly decent, especially if you're looking for a family SUV car. You're gonna have a lot of play, uh, space in here, especially the rear seats. You got a good amount of headroom in there. If you, however, get the panoramic window, which we have here, so you can open it with that. Just let's open the blind. Um, if you're sitting in the, back with a, in the back with a panoramic window, you're gonna have a little bit of a less space because that just limits your space in there. So headroom. I'm a meter and 80 tall or 5 foot 11, plenty headroom in there. Otherwise, if you're a little bit taller, around 185, so six foot one, it's gonna be a little bit more um, of a headroom issue. Otherwise, great um, space in the heated seats. You got your two USB-Cs in there as well. Inductor loading space down here as well, where you can charge your phone with a USB and USB-C port as well. Otherwise, how is the ride quality? Ride quality is actually fairly okay, nothing that stands out. It is, um, well, it's completely doable. The car is also a little bit louder in the interior, so wind noise are gonna pick up, especially because we have that panoramic window, so it's gonna be a little bit louder. Drive assist, we also have quite a lot, so we have um, travel assistance level two, or safety feature level two, how do you call it? Autonomous level two, there we go, um, which is adaptive cruise control, lane centralization, we have blind spot assistance, so quite a lot of features which are gonna help you, especially if you're driving over long distance. It's just gonna be very, very, um, well, easy to drive and not much hassle. You also have a 360 degree camera, which is gonna help you quite a lot if you're parking. You have parking sensors everywhere, so you're not gonna drive into anything apart from if you're blind. If you're blind, you probably shouldn't be driving a car as well. Um, you also have speed sign detection, so if you're driving in the city, also you're always gonna know how fast you're going. So right here, I can probably go 100 in the kid zone. So what is my final verdict on the Kia Sportage? Well, let's look at the competitors. You got a Hyundai Tucson or Tucson. You got a Skoda Karoq. You got an Audi Q3 if you want to go a little bit more premium, I'd say, because Audi is a premium market. Um, you also have a VW or Volkswagen Tiguan, which is another variant. This car is going to cost quite a lot, but you do get a lot of standard equipment which comes with it, which is nice. And the extras, there's only three extras. Color, you got the WISE package, you got the technology package, or basically the sound system. And um, with all the extra features like heated seats in the back, heated and cooled seats in the front, heated steering wheel. There's quite a lot of stuff you don't get in the other ones where you're gonna have to configure quite a lot more. That thing is annoying. You do get um, quite a lot for the money, but it is still fairly expensive. The consumption is quite a lot. Definitely turn this off. No, 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 stay down, please, stay down. Um, which is quite a lot. The design is pretty cool in my opinion, so you don't get that on all the cars. Fox and Tiguan one a little bit more boring. This looks pretty interesting. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video and also don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.